Hello, my name is David Bruce. So some of you may have seen, we had a great session a month or two ago recording five different pieces by YouTube music makers. And because I work regularly with the accordion, I was keen to include it in the lineup. And I suspected it would be a surprise and a treat for many of the composers how good it sounds in this kind of combination. And it seems I was right. The accordion like really makes everything blend so well. And the accordion just sounds so wonderfully blended. Like how the accordion is blending with everything is super, super interesting. Like, why aren't we all writing for accordion all the time? It's such a cool instrument in this context. It just, the blend is awesome. So yeah, blending was definitely one of the features people noticed. You can hear it, for example, blending with a string chord. Or with the clarinet in a melody line. Even here with the double bass. Ian Watson, who plays with the group Chroma here, is actually a perfect ambassador for the instrument and for what I think is its first superpower, its ability to adapt to such a huge range of different musical situations. So Ian has played with many of the UK's leading new music ensembles and orchestras, but he's also currently playing in the West End Musical. He's a regular in the band The Divine Comedy. And he even has his own accordion orchestra. For many of us, our sense of the instrument comes from something like that, uh, an old out of tune squeeze box that plays kids tunes or cheesy tourist melodies. It's maybe a bit like the effect that you get with the recorder where because most of us play it as kids, that's the sound we associate with it. Whereas in the hands of professionals, it's an amazing and beautiful instrument. But even when it's not played badly, the accordion is really used most commonly today in folk music. And there are some really amazing examples from all over the world, which we'll look at a little later. But I suspect if you're suffering from some good old accordion prejudice, those examples might not help you. So first, here are two connections which might help you revisualize the accordion and hear it with fresh ears. The first is electronics. The accordion has the capability of producing some really quite amazing electronic-like sounds. This is Oort Cloud by the Danish composer Jesper Holman, inspired by the mysterious clouds of icy debris orbiting around our solar system. The sounds here are created only by two accordions and a soprano saxophone. It was written for a particularly resonant hall, which has been to some extent recreated on the recording, but there's no actual electronics here, it's pure acoustic instruments. Another composer who brought out the electronic side of the instrument was the American experimental composer Pauline Oliveros. She was a pioneer of purely electronic music, like this piece Bye Bye Butterfly, which uses two oscillators, two amplifiers, two tape recorders, and a record player with a copy of Puccini's Madame Butterfly. And she found that the sounds of the accordion, which she played herself, fitted perfectly into this kind of world, such as here in Deep Listening from 1989, which was famously recorded 14 feet below ground in a disused cistern. Or in this album of justly tuned solo accordion, with subtle electronic effects added. And one final example of this more electronic-y sounding accordion is the Russian composer Sofia Gubaidalina, who uses effects like clusters of notes and bellow shakes to create electronic-like sounds. That bellow shake is a great accordion effect which both I and Tantacruel used in our pieces. and it's particularly good for minimalist kind of repetitive rhythms. One of the things that makes the accordion particularly good for this electronic -y effect is its incredible range. Here's my friend Michael Ward Bergman discovering that he can match the depths of the tuba's range. And as Ian from Chroma showed us, the high end of the instrument is equally incredible. Oh, 
That's an octave, isn't mm. it? Yeah, so the whole octave on the top of the right hand. The second connection I want to make is with the organ. The accordion has a lot in common with the organ, particularly of course the reed organ which has essentially the same method of production, blowing air through reeds. So a lot of Baroque organ music can sound really good. Arrangements of J.S. Bach are of course a standard of the repertoire. Or here in a Renaissance piece by Orlando Gibbons. Although this piece wasn't written for organ, I think the accordion here feels entirely natural. One of my favourite earlier composers on the accordion is Domenico Scarlatti, whose works were mostly written for harpsichord. On the accordion they often take on this slightly more folky tone which really appeals to me. And in a way they draw out one of the key characteristics of the instrument, that it doesn't do sustained sound very well. It can sustain for basically one tug of the bellow, although you can of course mask that change as the bellows go in and out, but it doesn't feel the most natural to sustain a long note. And this lack of sustain means that most of the 19th century piano repertoire doesn't work so well on the instrument. So just stepping in from the future here to say that I shared an early copy of this film with Ian from Cromer and he pointed out that a single bellow pull on a single note is usually able to last and sustain longer than most wind players could hold a note. So I guess I'm really talking here about big piano chords that require a lot more air on the accordion and so aren't really able to sustain for very long. Okay, back to the video. Now the more observant amongst you will have noticed that there are two different types of instrument here. There's the one that has the piano keyboard on the right hand, and the one that has just a series of buttons. Now although I've always heard Ian from Cromer talk about his instrument as an accordion, or maybe a button accordion, it's actually a form of bayan which was developed in Russia in the early 20th century. On the whole this has become the most favoured instrument amongst classical players. So the more traditional folk instrument like this one has a piano keyboard, but it also has what's called the stradella bass, which is an arrangement of bass notes and chords arranged in a cycle of fifths. And this makes playing popular tunes much more straightforward. If you want to play the one, four and five chord in any key, you just need to find the one and you'll know that there's a four on one side and a five on the other. It does vary from instrument to instrument, but as well as the bass note and the chord, you'll often have a third above, and you also have the minor chord, and the dominant seventh. Some of them also have a diminished chord. But that kind of bass isn't so useful for more chromatic classical music, so if you see a classical player with a piano right hand, they'll usually have a chromatic left hand like the bayan, or you can get hybrid instruments that are able to switch between the two types. Michael Ward Bergman uses this kind of hybrid instrument. I wrote Michael a kind of concerto for accordion called Grombox, which uses that chromatic left hand. In the Bayan style of instrument with the buttons, the layout brings all sorts of interesting options for playing. It turns out diminished triads are really, really easy. The pattern that the, the instrument's built in is minor third. So, uh, sounds really interesting. It's really easy. And so are arpeggios generally. Arpeggios are really easy. Because everything's very close, you know, within a very small, you can stretch. Almost four octaves in the hand, in one hand. Four octaves in one hand, oh my god. But before any composers get <laughs> excited by you that, can't move. you look at the rest of the fingers, you can't do anything with them. It's just like that's the experience. You couldn't play tuning for them. <laughs> And one other interesting little trick is that doing simultaneous chromatic scales in opposite directions is actually really easy. 
It's just the, the way the instrument's set up, that, that makes it really easy. Oh. Yeah, that's it. That's all my tricks. <laughs> So we talked about the organ, and another thing that the accordion has in common with the organ is the different stops or registers you can use. There are these buttons above the keyboard, or in Ian's case he's able to switch them using his chin, which always draws comments from the audience. People think it's, yeah, yeah. but I mean, people, they are designed to do that, but still people that I've played with for still the fingers. 20 years look at me doing that and think that it's some weird thing that only I do. But <laughs> they are designed to be changed with the chin so that you can be playing. It makes perfect sense, otherwise you have to take your hands off yeah. all the yeah, time well you and have stop to playing. And you look down and try and find one of those. Yeah. So these, these are just the most popular ones that I like out of these. So these are all there as well. But these are the ones that I use most often. Mm. So I have to you can change them, can you? You can't change it once the instrument's built. Oh, but it them, was but built because you requested... Uh, yeah, so ones. I asked them to have these ones up here. Some of these are just up or down an octave, but some also involve doubling the note in unison or doubling it at the octave or the double octave. And it's these stops I would blame for some of the more traditional, dare I say, cheesy sounds an accordion can make. You know, the quintessential Parisian busker will play their melody in octaves. It's that sound you instantly recognise. And of course, if your instrument isn't in the greatest condition, these different reeds will be slightly out of tune, so you get an effect a bit like a bad chorus pedal. <laughs> Doubling up the octave on the register keys is great if you want a really full chord, but for melody lines, I usually write single reed to make sure we're dealing just with one note and not basically a melody doubled in octaves. So I mentioned folk music, and Michael, who we saw in my piece Grownbox, played in a really fun folk and roots trio of the same name. And he also introduced me to one of my favourite uses of the accordion in the Romanian gypsy band the Taraf de Haiduks. The whole band, particularly in its original incarnation back in the 1990s, had some of the most incredible virtuosic players. And there's a really unique style of ornamentation on the accordion, which seems to come out of the lightness of touch you can use to play the keyboard. So it's much easier to play certain kinds of fast runs than it would be on the piano. But there are also loads of other folk traditions involving the accordion. I think it was Paul Simon's album Graceland which introduced me to Cajun and Zydeco music from Louisiana. Of course, tango is an over-familiar genre for the accordion, although bear in mind that it's often played on the bandonian, which is a related but separate instrument with a very unusual key layout. Many of the great Argentinian composer Astor Piazzolla's works were written for bandonian, but are often translated onto accordion. North Korea, believe it or not, has a strong accordion tradition, although I'm not clear how genuine these performers are in their enjoyment of it. And there are many, many other unique cultural uses, from Austrian polkas to Colombian cumbia, to Brazilian foro. It's used in jazz, Richard Galliano is one of the leading exponents. And there's even a genre I think is known as folk metal, which includes accordions, particularly popular in Finland, I believe. So in short, it really does have superpowers. It's got this amazing range, both physically, it can go beyond both edges of the piano. It also has this amazing ability to fit with any combination. It sounds a bit like strings, a bit like wind. It can really form a great part of an ensemble, as we saw. And it also fits within different cultures and different traditions of all kinds, high and low from all parts of the world. So if you have a prejudice about the accordion, I hope this goes some way towards helping you to see the light and go out and explore the wonderful world of the accordion. This will be my first ever performance at the hall, so it's kind of exciting. Yeah, we're under tempo, we're just working. I'm not sure how much faster it's going to go. <laughs> <laughs>